Hello everyone. In this series of videos, I will be showing how to build a simple and elegant Kotatsu table using basic tools. As an unashamed anime fan, I have always wanted a Kotatsu table. However, it was never high on my list of priorities. At the beginning of this year, it was cold. One cold electricity less night as I huddled under my blanket. I started looking at Kotatsu tables on Amazon. Unfortunately, they were either too small for my liking or they weren't square. Also, they were expensive. So I thought, how hard could this be? I bet I could build a Kotatsu table cheaper than the choices on Amazon. And that was when I fell down this rabbit hole. I wanted my table to be simple, elegant, and portable. I wanted to be able to disassemble it, and so I decided to use traditional joinery and have friction hold the table together. No screws or hardware. This was my initial design. If you notice, all the joints are dados. However, they come together into castle joints for the legs, half laps for the center, and rabbits for the edges. The point is that to build this table, all you would need is a table saw and a stack dado blade kit to keep costs down. I will be using more tools than just a table saw, including a circular saw, a straight edge saw guide, a router, a round over router bit, an orbital sander, various grits of sandpaper, lots of clamps, and some hand tools such as squares, measuring tape, a digital caliper, a chisel, a flush cut saw, and a pencil. So much for building a table that's cheaper than buying one off of Amazon. While many woodworking tutorials only show the glamorous parts, I want to show the entire process from beginning to end. To start, I go to Lowe's to buy the rubber wood panels that I can glue together for the tabletop. They have a number of different sizes. The first lesson I learned here is that you can't arbitrarily choose any dimensions you want. Lumber comes most commonly in 3 fourths inches, so if your design uses dimensions of commonly available lumber, then you can save a lot of time. Otherwise, you will either need specialized equipment to mill the lumber down to the dimensions you want, or you will be spending a lot of time doing that manually. The second lesson I learned is that wood is very non-uniform. Taking time to select the flattest boards with the least number of knots or defects is worth it. I have in mind a 3 feet by 3 feet tabletop, which I can make by gluing together a 3 feet by 20 inch board to a 3 feet by 16 inch board. It's also good to keep in mind what dimensions can physically fit in your car. For me, a length of over 3 feet means I need to put down the back seats and feed the wood through. It's a hassle. Next, I go to Home Depot to buy the New Zealand Select Pine for the beams and legs. I get three of the 1.5 inch by 1.5 inch by 6 feet posts. I'm also looking for 3 fourths inch by 1.5 inch by 6 feet beams, but they only have 8 feet ones available. I settle for that. Here I'm trying to find lumber that's straight, not warped, and with no defects. These types of lumber that I'm buying are called dimensional lumber because they have been milled on all four sides. In theory, they should be square and I won't need to use a jointer or planer to get 90 degree angle faces. However, that isn't always the case. So I select the wood that I want to buy carefully. The trade-off for dimensional lumber is that they're more expensive. I get the lumber cut in the back so that they can fit in my car. I cut the beams in half and I take 30 inches off of the posts. I put them in my car and take them home. Now we're ready for the fun part. I unwrap a 20 inch panel and a 16 inch panel that I can glue together for the tabletop. You can see that by default there is a gap between the two boards. I need to square these two edges so that they will close up the gap. I also check various combinations to make sure that no combination magically is a perfect fit before I resort to doing more work. I bring over the 16 inch panel first and use the square to identify areas on the edge that aren't square. I use a jack plane I bought off of Amazon to shave off slivers to remedy the situation.
After the 16 inch board looks good, I do the same thing with the 20 inch panel. I put them together and observe the gap. It seems that the gap got closed, so the boards are ready to be glued. I put some glue on the edge and spread it around it with a putty knife. I clamp the boards together. I try to have the boards matched up exactly so that I won't need to spend too much time sanding the whole thing smooth. I also clamp on two oak posts to keep the boards straight. This will take a day to dry. In the meantime, I start cutting the legs and beams down to size. I start off with the posts. I had taken off 30 inches from each post at Home Depot. Now I take another 30 inches off the rest of each post. I use this table saw sled, which I made earlier. I will make a video about this sled because it is very helpful for getting accurate cuts on this cheap Ryobi table saw. Using this sled, I can see exactly where the saw is going to cut. This sled also makes cutting on a table saw much safer. Be sure to wear a protective face shield and respirator when operating a table saw. I also turn on the vacuum. I can make two 15 inch legs from each 30 inch post. Originally, I wanted to create five legs from each six feet post. However, due to my miscalculation, I'm only able to create four legs from each post, each around 15 inches long. Then I end up with almost a foot of scrap. Still, I am able to create enough legs for three tables. I make the cut, then I inspect the legs and clean them up. Now I arrange them so that I can put them in groups where they are all around the same height. I put the legs for the other tables aside to focus on just this table. Now I want to clean up the cut and make the end smooth. The good thing about using the sled is that I can use clamps to clamp the wood onto the sled. Then my hands won't be in harm's way. Now I move on to cut the beams down to size. I measure out 36 inches and mark the beams. I only need 8 beams per table so I remove the extra ones. Now I make the cut. I remove the offcuts, they will be useful later on. Now I clean up the end by shaving off just a little bit. Finally, I vacuum up all the sawdust. Now it's time to switch over to the dado blade kit. These are basically just thicker blades so you can cut holes of a set width. I lock the table saw before removing the sled and vacuuming underneath it. Now I remove the insert and unscrew the bolt holding the blade in place. I slide the blade out and put in the dado blade kit. 
I have it set to use just the two outer blades with a spacer in between. Because this table saw is weak and I'm concerned about too much weight in the blades weighing the motor down. I make sure the dado blade is firmly on the arbor before securing it down with the washer and nut. I tighten the nut so it's secure. I also make sure to lower the lever for the riving knife and kickback guard so that the dado blade has more distance for travel. Then I put the wrenches back and also put the insert back on. In the next video, I will show how to make all the cuts for the table. Thanks for watching.